Hello and welcome to Tokyo Daily on day 16, the last day of events in the Olympic Games. Coming off, I'll admit it wasn't a massive day, day 15, but it was a massive night, a huge night, night 15 of the Games. And one of the biggest things to happen in these Olympics happened last night. The Boomers, the Australian Boomers, beating Slovenia 107 to 93 to earn their first ever medal in the Olympics. It was absolutely brilliant to watch. And with me to talk all about it, it's our backup basketball correspondent, Mr. Lockie Gibbs. How are you, Lockie? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Thanks, Haas. When you introduced this slot for me, you did say that you'd introduce me as basketball expert, but backup correspondence <laughs> has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Yeah, the backup basketball correspondent. So uh, talk us through your emotions, mate. You're, you're a huge basketball guy. How, how's that? How are you feeling after that amazing result? Oh, mate, I'm absolutely on top of the world after last night. Like, it was absolutely, it was unbelievable. And I really hope, by the way, when we uh, present this, that you Photoshop the Boomers jersey on me like like we are, the, <laughs> like we discussed. But, mate, it was an awesome result. You know, after, I guess, the heartbreak of the 2016 Olympics um, and another, another semifinal loss to US uh, heading into this game and, it really, you just didn't know what you were getting. You know, Slovenia was so gallant against France, going down by one point, and it was arguable that they deserved to win that game. And so heading in, I was super, super nervous, but I was just so stoked that the boys could pull it through and win a bronze. Oh, yeah, it was awesome. And a little bit of history for you. We've come forth four times before this. Seoul, 88, uh, against the U.S., uh, lost in the bronze medal match. Atlanta, 96, to Lithuania. Sydney, 2000, to Lithuania again. And then Rio, 2016, like you said, to Spain. Did, did you did you watch Shinya afterwards and see Andrew Gay's tearing up and the, all the emotions running there? Yeah, I did. You could just tell, like, the emotion in, like, not just Andrew Gaze, but also Andrew Bogut in their voices. Like, you know, they've both been such huge parts of Australian basketball, and it truly meant so much for them to have the Australian team achieve this. Like, yes, they set out to achieve gold, but just to get a medal at the Games, I think, was just a phenomenal effort. And I'll tell you what, I actually, I don't know about you, Harv, so I'd like your take on this, but what would you rather? Would you rather lose in the gold medal match to win silver? To or win win the bronze medal match and go home with bronze because I feel like there's so much on the line. There's such a big difference between a bronze medal and nothing at all. Mm, yeah, totally agree with you there. And this was actually going to be a question of the day. You recommended it, but we stopped doing the question of the day because it was a bit too much work. But uh, th- to answer your question, uh, I reckon in a team sport, in the long run, a silver, like you can look back on that with more pride because obviously it's a better result than bronze technically but in the moment a bronze would definitely feel better because you've won your final game you know but silver you've lost and had that heartbreak of missing out on gold so yeah short term bronze long term reflecting on it silver what about you what do you reckon yeah, great answer. I think I'd go with the same. And I'll tell you what, I think we might have broken a few Australian laws. We're almost four minutes into the podcast and we haven't mentioned Paddy Mills, the oh. absolute <laughs> superstar of the Australian team. You know, 42 points, was absolutely electric behind the arc. Um, he was super, nine assists. Like, he was unbelievable. He basically carried the Australian team. Like, he, he sparked our offense when it looked like there was a couple of times we were struggling. Sylvania was getting on top, but Paddy would just come through with a basket. He was absolutely superb. And you could see how much that meant to him after the game. And it was just a phenomenal performance and one of my favorites of the Olympics. But he had a few friends, Harps. He had a few friends. Uh, and Matisse Thibel was super on defense and he offered heaps. But Dante Exum. He was in foul trouble early, but he came home super strong in the last half, came up with a couple of clutch shots, a couple of clutch stops on uh, Luka Doncic, and it was just a phenomenal all-round team performance, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it was amazing. And Paddy Mills, 42 points, his best scoring game ever. And to save it for that, just absolutely brilliant. But moving away from the kind of individual performances, where, where do you reckon the game was won and lost uh, for the Boomers and Slovenia? What, what do you reckon the, the tactics were and the kind of team things that Australia did that won the game for them? Yeah, well, I think some interesting changes that the coach made was, for example, Matthew Delavadova, um, the championship player. He played quite high minutes in previous games, but he only played the two in that. So obviously, they he ha- he'd been struggling a little bit in the tournament. So they went with the form players. Um, they played a lot of Jock Landau, Dante Exum. They started Matisse Thibault, um, Ingles, Paddy. All played high minutes. So I think they made sure that they got their minutes into the uh, the big players. And I think at the end of the day, like. 
this might this might sound a bit of a simplistic thing, but we just made we sort of just made the shots when they when they counted. Like every time Slovenia seemed to get a bit of a run on, we uh, we came up with a basket to halt halt the momentum. And I think the biggest one was obviously stopping Luka, Do- Luka Doncic. He's one of the absolute superstars of the basketball world, but he's well held by both Matisse Thybulle and Dante Exum. Yeah, well, yes, yeah, top analysis, from, top analysis from you there, mate. I know absolutely nothing, so you're giving me a lot of insight. So cheers for that. But pre-game, how, how were you feeling? Were you feeling Australia? Were, were they the favourites, or were Slovenia just the favourites because they have got that kind of one-man show, Luka Doncic? Well, mate, <laughs> to be honest, mate. So heading into this, so I actually listened to um a podcast, an American podcast, and obviously they were talking about Team USA, and they could not have been more disrespectful to our towards Australia. <laughs> they didn't, they didn't really respect us much. So after that, I was feeling feeling a bit bit down. Um, and considering how well Slovenia went into their semi final match in our past history, I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no. And particularly in the uh, the second quarter, my fears ramped up because against Team USA, it was only like 12 points up halfway through the second, but that ended up being about two points up at half time and f- felt like the same was going to happen again. But the boys had learned from their mistakes. But look, mate, I. It was just touch with the whole time. You know, I was watching between between my hands, <laughs> but we got there in the end. Oh, yeah, it was absolutely awesome. And uh, that that um, USA podcast you were listening to, not not very surprising for a USA podcast, but uh, I don't know if you've been listening to the pods recently, but we have had a lot of losses to the USA in <laughs> close matches, um, in crunch matches in these Olympics. But it's good to finally get a medal for the Boomers, and I reckon that just about wraps our chat up. So thanks very much, Lockie, for coming on. And um teaching us all a bit about what happened in that game for the people who know absolutely nothing like me. Ab- absolute pleasure to uh, co-host with you again, Harps. One of the best, doing an awesome job. Thank you. See you tomorrow, mate, for our final episode. Ah, Thank you so much, Lockie, for coming on the show. It was <laughs> good fun talking to, about the basketball with you, mate. Um, yeah, thanks very much again. But speaking of the basketball, actually, we didn't even mention this because we were so excited about the Boomers. But the gold medal match happened last night as well, uh, or in the afternoon, actually. The USA against the French. Um, the USA got up 87-82, continued their domination of, of the sport, really, at the Olympics. But the French, it could have been an entirely different story had France converted a few more of their free throws. Just 18 out oh, eighteen out of 29, they scored, which, yeah, it's, it's not great. It's not great at all. Uh, it could have been an entirely different game had they converted a few more of those, but all hypotheticals, of course. But another big, big story out of last night for Australia in the high jump. Oh, I'll tell you, the last time a woman won a medal in the high jump was in 1964, a silver medal in Tokyo woman by the name of Michelle Brown. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, Nicola McDermott was destined to do the same this time around in Tokyo. She got a silver medal for herself, Australian record and obviously a personal best of 2.02 metres. She absolutely smashed it. Uh, she was oh, she was so close to winning gold. The ROC is Maria Lasitskine, uh 2.04 metres, so just got uh, one level above her and somewhat strangely maybe, McDermott, uh, on her last um, last few jumps that she got knocked out in, she went for the 2.04, and had she completed those, had she jumped that height, it wouldn't have changed her position anyway. Not sure why she didn't go for the 2.06, maybe something in her head, maybe she was going for a PB. I don't know. It just seems a bit strange to me. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, in the bronze medal position was Ukraine's Yaroslava Mahuku, Mahuc, Mahuchik. Sorry. I've bungled that. She got uh, solid two meters and uh, another Aussie. She was looking very good at the start, but kind of faded away. Eleanor Patterson, she came fifth with 1.96 meters. But Nicola McDermott, the big story out of that, it was amazing to watch her in action. First medal uh, for an Aussie woman in high jump since 1964. Phenomenal stuff. Uh, good on you, Nicola. Nice work. Um, also, in the track and field, this was uh, very much looked forward to by a uh, big, big chunk of the nation. Stuart McSwain and Ollie Hoare in the 1,500-meter final for the men. Stuart McSwain, with this time that he got of uh, 3.31.91, he would have won any other Olympic final ever. Guess where he came? He came seventh. 
the race was that quick. It was astonishing. Uh, Jakob Ingebrigtsen uh, got himself a gold medal from Norway in 3.28.32, Olympic record, that is. Oli Hall came 11th. He, he was doing all right at the start, but faded away like McSwain. McSwain was in the top three um, in the final lap, but, yeah, he, he definitely faded away. Uh, but awesome result considering awesome time. Maybe he's not so pleased about the placement, but he couldn't have done much more about that time. That is phenomenal. Three minutes, 31.91 seconds. Seventh place would have won any other Olympic 1500 meter. That's, that's crazy, isn't it? But speaking of crazy, the marathon, the women's marathon was yesterday. Yesterday morning, got moved up to Sapporo because uh, they moved it up north because they thought it was going to be a bit cooler than Tokyo. Turns out it was three degrees warmer, 34 degrees, bit of a sweltering day out there in Sapporo. Uh, and the Kenyan, unsurprisingly, uh, Perez Jeptachir, she won herself a gold medal. She charged over a compatriot, Bridget Kosegi, uh, laid on and finished the race 42 Ks in two minutes, 27 uh, so two hours, not two minutes. That would be pretty crazy. Two hours, 27 minutes and 20 milliseconds, whatever you call them, 27.2 seconds. And this, uh, the um, bronze medal place was Molly Sadel from America. She was 20 seconds off gold. It's the third marathon ever. Uh, that's astonishing. That That is excellent. Excellent work from Molly from America. Good on you, Molly. Speaking of good on you, Sinead Diver, originally from Ireland, moved to Melbourne when she was 25, started running just 10 years ago. She's 44 years old, mum of two, Olympic debut. She came 10th in the women's marathon. How, that is awesome. Awesome to see from Sinead Diver. Uh, did the nation proud, I reckon, there. A couple of other Aussies, Ali Pashley came 23rd, and Lisa Waitman came 26th. I'm sure there's some kind of joke about saying Waitman, and maybe she was a bit slow. Uh, I don't know. Jeez, get a bit loose this podcast. <laughs> so we're coming up to the end of it. Uh, but another big event, not involving Australians. Brazil, Spain in the men's football final. Brazil won 2 1 after extra time, thanks to Malcolm's 108th minute goal. And at the same venue, just 19 years ago, well, not just 19 years ago, but 19 years ago, they won the World Cup final there in Yokohama, uh, which is a bit of a funny old coincidence. And they've got back to back men's football titles, of course, winning it in Rio last time around. But this was a this was a good one to watch. Usually, golf's got a bit of a bad rep amongst the youth, I reckon, amongst anyone below about 60 years of age, most of them. But I quite enjoyed watching the uh, kind of culmination of this pretty uh, gripping golf event for the women, Hannah Green and Aussie, she was equal third coming into the last day. She came fifth at 13 under and yeah, I think she really got hampered by a bit of a bit of a pointless delay because they were expecting rain. They, they said there might be thunder or lightning. Very, very frightening. Uh, but it didn't happen. So there was about a 45 minute delay all for nothing and Hannah Green just completely lost her momentum. And yeah, ended up coming fifth, which was, I'm sure, a bit disappointing for her, but she had fifth is a very good result. And of course, the winner, not of course, but I'll tell you, the winner, Nellie Corder, 17 under from America. She is, she's got a pretty amazing sporting family. Listen to this. Uh, her parents, Petter and Regina Rajukova, um, that from the Czech Republic, they were both pro tennis players. Her sister, Jess, she's also on the LPGA golf tour, and she dates an an ice hockey player uh, called Andreas Athanasiu and another American won the men's uh, men's gold in the golf as well, Xander Sheffale. Uh, um, yeah, so American dominance in that sport, which is not entirely unexpected. But another awesome result, Cassiel Rousseau got through his semifinal yesterday into the final of the 10-meter platform diving. He came eighth, which is a very, very respectable result considering he only took up the sport about four years ago. He was an acrobat before that four or four years ago, but took up diving, and he said he was a bit of a tadpole among sharks, which was a good quote, I reckon, uh, from old Cass. Uh, eighth, eighth, pretty good result, I reckon, and of course the knitting Brit, uh, Tom Daly, uh, knitting his crocheting, doing a bit of knitting, he loves it, uh, while spectating in the pool. Uh, he, he got a bronze medal. Uh, Yuan Kao, the Chinese guy, got himself a gold medal, and Jian Yang got a silver. He was very, very unhappy with how the judges uh, <laughs> judged his dive at the end. He thought he should have got goals over his compatriot, but he did not. He got himself a silver medal, and 
some other Aussies in action. Uh, in the K4 500 metres in the canoe sprint, the women came seventh, the men came sixth. Uh, men, they had a couple of Olympic medalists in their team, came sixth. Might be a bit disappointed with that. Aussie Stingers, friend of the show, Lena Mihailovic, of course, she scored a goal in a 14-7 win over the Netherlands uh, in the fifth place playoff. So good on them. Uh, Fairwelling Bronwyn Knox in style because it's her fourth and final Olympic Games, these ones. So good way to wrap it up, finishing fifth, the highest placed out of the losing quarterfinalists. How's this? In the bronze medal match in the women's water polo, the Hungary against the ROC, Hungary won 11-9. They were 10-9 up. The ROC sent everyone forward, and uh, with five seconds to go, maybe, the Hungary keeper, Alda Magyari, just looped it in from the other end, scored a goal. Old Alda Magyari. I reckon Magyari actually means Hungarian in Hungarian. You might, Someone might want to check that, but gut feeling. I reckon Magyari means Hungarian in Hungarian. There you go. Check Someone check that for me, please. I don't really want to do it. Uh, in the gold medal match, the USA beat Spain 14-5 in the women's water polo. And just quickly, another interesting one before I throw it over to myself for the preview. Uh, Giacomo Spazzini, you probably haven't heard of him. Neither had I. But uh, the Times have reported uh, that he he's um, Lamont Marcel Jacobs. He's uh, his former sports nutritionist until March. Uh, he was his sports nutritionist. Jacobs, of course, the 100-meter sprint winner and the 4x100 for Italy as well. Uh, but old Giacomo, he's been up to no good. He's under investigation for the illegal distribution of anabolic steroids. Fun times for Giacomo Spazzini. Uh, yeah, no, not doing too well with the Italian cops old there, uh, old Giacomo. He's a pro bodybuilder. And he's credited himself with helping uh, Lamont Marcel Jacobs, his gold medal win. And he's also the subject of a police probe into fraud and some other allegations. And yeah, Jacobs split from him in March because of the investigations, I guess. But that's that's a strange one, isn't it? From Giacomo Spazzini. We haven't got an expert guest other than Lockie at the start today. Uh, we're hope- we're hopefully we have two tomorrow. So what I'm going to do is throw it over to myself to preview what is to come in this day 16, this 16th and final day of the Olympic Games. Here's Harper Pestinger for you. Now, I'm recording this before I recorded the review, so I don't know how I segued it, but thanks very much, Harper, for throwing to me. So I'll get into the preview for the final day of events at the Tokyo Olympics. Jeez, this is a bit of a loose show, isn't it? But uh, I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, it's good fun on day 16 of the Olympics. So looking ahead to today, there there are lots of events basically all through the day, which we love to see uh, and rounded out by an amazing closing ceremony, hopefully, but it all kicks off at 8 a.m with the Men's Marathon, Australian Eastern Standard Time, of course. The Men's Marathon, 8 a.m., Aliud Kipchoge, the great man, of course, first man to run a sub-two-hour uh, marathon, not not officially, but he did it anyway, so I'll count it. He's going to be defending his title. He'd be the third ever person, uh, third ever man, or maybe, I don't know what it is, something like that, to uh, go back-to-back winning the marathon uh, and for Australia in that, we've got Liam Adams, Jack Rayner, and Brett Robinson. So hopefully they do well, but Elijah Kipchoge, probably a favourite, I guess. Uh, <laughs> 10 a.m. Uh, there, Lots of these events haven't got Australia, but they're all big, big matches, big events. So check them out anyway. Uh, 10 a.m., we've got the women's volleyball bronze medal match, South Korea, Serbia. 11 a.m., this has got an Aussie in it. Uh, the women's Omnium with Annette Edmondson, that's in the track cycling. So the women's Omnium, the Omnium, uh, it's got kind of four events in it. I think Omnium in Latin actually means with everything. So there you go. Makes sense for you Latin speakers out there. Uh, Annette Edmondson in the women's Omnium. Scratch race is at 11 a.m. Then the tempo race at 11.45. Elimination race at 12.26. And points race at 1.25. So a big day for Annette Edmondson. And then we've got uh, at 11.24 a.m., Matthew Richardson, the track cycling, not the uh, commentator and former Richmond AFL player, although that would be quite impressive, but Matthew Richardson, the track cyclist, in the quarterfinal of the men's Kieran, he's at 11.24. Ten minutes later, 11.34, Matthew Glatzer in the same event, semis at 12.09, and the gold medal race at 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, But just a bit before that, we've got in the gymnastics, the women's group all-around final, uh, which will be very impressive to watch as are all the gymnastics events and all the events in general, really. Olympics are pretty amazing. I'm going to miss them. 
Oh, I'm about to tear up with the Olympics nearly done, but uh, also at midday, we've got the bronze medal match in the handball. Uh, a bit of a Scandinavian derby, this one, Norway versus Sweden. I love a bit of handball and I love a bit of rivalry, so uh, we'll definitely be watching that. 12.30 p.m., 12.30 p.m., uh, this is a good one. The basketball women's gold medal match, USA versus Japan. USA going in hot, 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 hot favourites to that one. But Japan have knocked off some big teams, including the French, I think, in the semi-final, if memory serves me correctly. Uh, And home home country advantage. They haven't got much home crowd advantage, but who knows? Basketball is a funny old sport. Uh, USA versus Japan at 12.30, 2.30 p.m. We've got the women's volleyball gold medal match. Brazil again against the Americans. Those pesky Americans. They didn't bloody everything, aren't they? Then 2.40 p.m. Uh, in the men's water polo bronze medal match, Hungary-Spain, uh, 3 p.m. to – going to go for a couple of hours, maybe 4.45. It's going to finish. We've got a whole lot of boxing gold medal bouts. We've got the women's lightweight followed by the men's lightweight and then the women's middleweight and then the men's super heavyweight. Uh, I think that's like 91 kilos plus. Uh, so, yeah, wouldn't want to face those guys on the street, would you? But then 4 p.m., I uh, spoke about the handball women's bronze medal match, the Scandinavian derby. This one's a bit of a Napoleonic derby, I reckon. The ROC coming up against France. That will be a spicy encounter uh, in the handball women's gold medal match. Uh, I do love handball, uh, as do I love water polo. And the water polo men's gold medal match, Greece-Serbia at 5.30 p.m. And that is going to be the last event of the Tokyo Olympics. How good have they been? Uh, it's just, oh, I've loved it so much. It's been so good. I hope you've loved it as well. I hope, I hope you've enjoyed our coverage of it. I've really enjoyed bringing it to you. And I am going to be lapping up that water polo gold medal match for the men. I'm going to be savoring it because it's the last Olympic event uh, in the Summer Olympics for three years. But the Winter Olympics roll around in like six months, which will be good. But rolling around just after the water polo men's match at 9 p.m., uh, till about midnight, going to go for about three hours. The closing ceremony, of course, uh, the opening ceremony, d- divided opinion. Let's hope this one unites the world, I guess, uh, to use a bit of a cliche. Hopefully, everyone enjoys this one. And speaking of uniting the world, the kind of catchphrase for this closing ceremony is world we share. And the uh, International Olympic Committee, the organisers, have uh, said that they're Closing ceremony is going to express the idea that each of us inhabits their own world, which is very, very deep, uh, very, very Olympic, uh, very cliche as well, if you ask me. And I'm not going to have too many Aussies there, a few more than the opening ceremony, but not many more because uh, all the Aussie athletes left like between 24 and 48 hours after their final event. Um, yeah, they were rushed out by the AOC and the flag bearer for that, there were big shouts for Emma McKeon to be flag bearer, but I think she's somewhere in the Northern Territory at the moment. So it'd be a bit inconvenient for her coming out of hotel quarantine to do that. But we've got someone who is a legend of his sport, three medals, the most successful, most successful Australian sailor in Olympic history, Matt Belcher. He won the 470 sailing gold with his teammate, Will Ryan. Uh, in these Olympics, so he will be the flag bearer, and yeah, that's it. That's the closing ceremony. We've still got another podcast tomorrow to wrap up what happened uh, today, the closing ceremony, everything that happened. Talk, talk about the Olympics in general. Get all our previous guests on, have a chat to them. It's going to be super fun. I uh, hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Wherever you're watching, support the show however you can. We we'd love you for it. We would adore you for it. Just doing whatever you can, and that, that's me for today. Thanks, Lockie, for coming on earlier in the show. Uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you tomorrow for the last episode. Ah, oh, sad, isn't it? Thanks, guys.